Hello, folks. This is great. Um, so I will get us kicked off here. Uh, folks may filter in, um, but we're going to get started. This is the second of our contributor spotlight interviews. Um, and I'm really excited because today we get to talk to Unison co-founder Paul about the Orderators Library. Uh, and I have heard he's planned something very special for us. Um, and <laughs> with, with that in mind, I would love to hear from you, Paul, like what do we have in store for us today? What's the plan? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Rebecca. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about today. Um, this is kind of a new format. Um, but basically what I was thinking was, um, I'm going to assume you don't know anything about the library or, you know, maybe you've heard some things, but basically don't, you know, you're not an expert in the library or anything. And I wanted to try to just teach you the core concepts of the library kind of from first principles. And then we will actually use it uh, and we'll write some code with it together and, uh, you know, kind of introduce new concepts as we go. And yeah, so that's, that's what I was thinking. Okay, cool. So, if folks good? do have questions, yeah, this sounds great. I'm super excited. I know nothing about this library. So we're all, we're all in this together. Um, if folks have questions, please do drop them in the chat um, and I'll read them out. And then after this, uh, we have an office hours in the office hours channel. So come by and ask questions. Um, we can, you know, work dynamically with with folks as well. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get started. What is uh, what is an orderator? You know, wh what is this abstraction uh, that you chose to express in this library? Okay, yeah. So why don't we actually just jump right into VS Code? And uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show a few things um, just to kind of introduce sort of some of the ideas, the ideas behind the library. Okay, so uh, what is an orderator? So an orderator is, it's kind of a, a, a generalization of streams. So uh, let's just talk about streams for, for a minute here. Um, so here's some, streamy code, which I'll just paste in. Um, and so one really nice thing about streams is, you know, they're lazy. And so if you have sequences of operations on them, um, then they kind of fuse together and sort of all end up working in, in one pass over the data. And uh, so like in this is example here, which how do we get the watch expressions to uh, maybe you just have to save? So yeah, like even though we're mapping over this huge stream, uh, you know, not all of the, you know, we're not gonna end up applying that mapping function to the whole stream. Um, likewise with the filter, because there's that last take that's gonna be basically cutting the stream short. And so, you know, streams are nice. They're very compositional. Um, but they are very, they're just purely linear. Like all you can do with a stream is peel off one element at, at a time. And so this kind of came up, um, I guess the original motivation for the library is we are actually working on a full, like full text search and, and documentation search and code search across Unison share. And, uh, we wanted to try to implement that in Unison and Unison Cloud, just to kind of eat our own dog food. But um, just as an example of like the kind of thing that we're gonna encounter is, so we have this uh, search index and um, you know, you might have a query that's like, okay, return the top 10 results for uh, definitions that contain uh, the substring list, the substring map and the substring Nat dot increment, and um, so it's this boolean boolean query, and you might imagine you know there could be lots of results for each of those substrings. Like there might be lots of results for list, lots of results for map, and maybe fewer results for nat dot increment. And so like 
you know, while you could certainly compute the, the intersection by say like iterating over each of these result sets and then checking if it is contained in the other result sets, uh, that's kind of inefficient. Like, especially if we're just taking the top 10, we don't want to have to compute the full intersection. And so I was like, man, it would be great if we could just somehow lazily intersect these result sets and then just take the first 10 of, of that. And then somehow it would just magically all fuse together and work. And so that was, that was kind of the dream is, is can we achieve that somehow with a nice, elegant, uh, functional abstraction? And, uh, that's where order order orderators come from. So conceptually it is like, it's a stream that is sorted or, you know, has some underlying ordering and that you can skip ahead in the stream and to introduce, to introduce it, I was thinking, let's actually look at, um, a really simple implementation of, of list intersection or set intersection, and then, uh, think about how we can like generalize it a little bit to make it streaming basically. Okay. So here's a, here's an implementation of, uh, intersection on two sorted lists. And I want to just talk through this code a little bit, cause we're going to be kind of, uh, making it streamy or generalizing it a bit for, for orderators, but, uh, okay. So, uh, we're assuming these two lists are sorted. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to, you know, basically pattern match on the two lists. If either one is empty, then we're done. You know, the, the intersection is empty. Um, and assuming they're both non-empty, we compare the first element of each. Uh, if it's a match, we include that in the output. If it's not a match, we drop, uh, basically drop from the one that is smaller. We drop from the side that's smaller. Um, okay. So does that, you with me so far? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That's a straightforward recursive yeah. walkthrough yeah. of intersection. Yeah. Good stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. But this, um, if we were to use an algorithm like this for our, um, uh, sort of search index example, where we have, you know, the 5,000 results, the 12,000 results and the 452 results, that's kind of not ideal. And let me explain why. So let's actually even just look at this example here. So the intersection of the range of values from 100 to 705 and the range of values from 700 to 1500, right? And, uh, you know, I mean, this works, like we still, we still get the correct result of, you know, between 700 and 705 is, is the overlap. But if you kind of think about what this is gonna end up doing, um, it's going to be sort of, it's very linear. It's like, we're going to be peeling off elements of the, here, I put in a comment here, you know, on step one, we're going to be comparing one with 700 and we'll be like, okay, one is less. So we're going to skip over that. And then we're going to be looking at two versus 700. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yeah. Um, and then three versus 700. And then finally, 700 steps later, we're going to get to the point where we've dropped all the elements that don't match from the first list. And we now are comparing 700 and 700 and we, you know, output that 700. Um, so cool. So, I mean, that's, that's no good, right? We're like doing this like linear scan over, uh, you know, the list. And if these are, if these are large result sets, say for our search engine, um, you know, we want to try to avoid that. Gotcha. So any ideas how we might, how we might do that? <laughs> I mean, we could use the power of like binary search or different searching yes. algorithm, uh, to yes. help speed it up. Yes, exactly. We have the technology. So, 
Yes, we have the technology. So let's look at that. So here's, again, I'll just paste, paste some more comments. Um, right. So, um, so instead of doing these like linear scans of, of like dropping from, um, from a one here, we are going to compare the, the two elements and we're going to realize that, oh, a two is greater. 700 is greater than uh, one. And then we're going to do binary search for the first index in a one whose value is greater is uh, greater than or equal to 700. So uh, yeah, and assuming, I mean, we'll either find such an index or skip past the, the very end of A1, but then we're just gonna jump directly to that index now and, and um and then continue the the process from there so now instead of those 700 steps to get to the point where the two uh sequences align we're going to be taking a uh, log 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 base two of 700 which is like nine nine and a half steps so much better right um so so that is that's a that's the general gist of, of kind of how you can more efficiently do um, intersection um, with me so far. Yeah. Um, anyone in the audience also have questions so far? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, cool. But um, so looking, and, and a really nice thing about this algorithm is it's very adaptive. So if the two sets that you're intersecting, you know, don't intersect very much, then you're going to end up like skipping over, you know, huge, huge uh, chunks of, of the input. And so the amount of work that you do is, is kind of roughly proportioned to uh, the size of the output rather than the size of either either set. Um, cool. So looking at this algorithm, so this is like a cool little adaptive algorithm for computing set intersection. So that was fun. But if you actually look at it, it's kind of interesting. We like I've, I've written it here or described it here in terms of lists. But what are we actually using from list? Like, do we actually care that it's a list? And the answer is not really. Um, so here is what we are, here's what we're actually using. Um, what we're actually using is just these two operations uh, on the sequence. So we need to be able to fetch the next element. Cool. So we did that, you know, when we're sort of, when we are at a point of possible alignment, we're just be, want to be able to fetch the next element. Um, and then the second operation we need on the sequence sequences is, is uh, this ability to skip ahead in the sequence until some predicate switches to true. So um, so yeah, we, we skipped ahead while you know the value of the sequence was uh, less than uh, 700 or not greater than or equal to 700 either way. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so, so that's kind of interesting that all we really care about to be able to implement algorithms like this is it needs to be a stream that we can advance to the next element and skip ahead uh, using some predicate. So that's that's where order eaters come from. So it's it's literally that. So let's introduce the actual um, type here. Cool. So stream is very, um, you know, all, all you do is you can emit, emit elements uh, as output from the stream. Uh, but so the producer of the stream doesn't, I mean, this, this is enough to be able to like skip ahead, right? Or not skip ahead. This is enough to just get the next element. You can just get the next thing emitted. Right. But uh, you don't have any way of telling the producer of the stream Hey, I want to skip ahead. Mm. Um, 
So that's what orderator. Yeah, maybe can we pull up orderator now? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, let's look at instruction as well. So yeah, a so unlike a stream where when you emit a value as output, it just you know kind of returns back unit. Um, when you yield a value from an orderator stream, the consumer of that stream is going to tell you what it wants you to do next. So it's going to tell you either cool, just advance to the next element of the stream, or it's going to tell you actually uh, skip ahead, you know, until this predicate is no longer true. Hmm. And so as a, cons as a producer of a, you know, when you're defining orderators, you have more responsibilities. You have to be capable of doing more things than just a stream because you need to have this ability to skip ahead. But, uh, you know, assuming you have a way of doing that, then it turns out we can implement all these super cool adaptive uh, algorithms uh, like on sets and, and maps and so forth that kind of fuse together really nicely and are lazy and are streaming. Hmm. And so, yeah, so for instance, if you do uh, orderator intersection, maybe we'll just do that even right now. Um, I'm actually going to comment. Let's comment this out just so we don't. Do, do. Um, yeah, like let's, so there's a, there's already a function in the orderator library uh, intersection. So if you take, you can use orderator.range to create, say, a huge range of, uh, and then um, maybe do intersection with another range that just overlaps by like, you know, two elements or something. Okay. And then you can pass the result to to list, orderator.to list. Sometimes I forget how many zeros I have in these. I think that's right. Oh, wait, we need, or let's go 10, what is it? 100,000? Let's do 100,000. Can't count zeros. 100,000 to 100,002. Do we have the right number of zeros? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Great. All right. Okay. We are programmers. Right. Yes, we can do this. <laughs> um, Intersection R1, R2. Okay. But this is going to be expressed in the orderator ability. So we need to pop it back out um, to like a, a list. Yeah, you could just order it or dot to list. Okay, let's do that. We'll put that in a watch expression. Great. Uh, oh, we so we have an off by one error because the range is exclusive. Uh, let's yeah, All go right. to go to. Here we go. Uh, cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. Ranges. We, we could show, um, orderator dot range, you know, zero to 10 or zero to five, uh, does not include five. Uh, is there a range closed function on orderator? Yeah. Okay. There should be contributions. Welcome. Um, <laughs> all right. Cool. So, um, yeah, anyway, so if you have, uh, you know, a whole bunch of orderators that you're intersecting, you know, because the intersection is lazy and is using this kind of, uh, binary search to skip ahead, um, it actually ends up being very efficient and, uh, kind of whichever, whichever orderator kind of most constrains the output is going to end up, uh, sort of leading the leading the the skipping and so you'll always be sort of skipping ahead as much as you can mm. um and yeah it's kind of laziness and it just kind of works out so yeah let's let's uh let's do something 
simple first, and then we'll do something a little bit brain bendy. Um, this is this is not very brain bendy, but just I, this is going to sort of show some interest something interesting about the library. Um, so I want to compute um, whether or not these two sets intersect. Okay. Okay. And. Yeah, I mean, you might, like, if you were doing this just with uh, the built-in set type, I mean, there is already a function to compute the intersection of two sets. Right? Right. But, uh, and so you could call that, and then you could check, okay, is the result empty? But, uh, you know, that's that's no good. That's, you know, that's amateur hour, because then we're, like, materializing this this whole big, potentially intermediate set only to check if it's empty. Mm. Um, now we could go in and like using the internal knowledge of how a set is implemented, you know, we could probably just implement a one-off, you know, does this set intersect with another set? Right. But like, right. that sounds hard. That's like, we need to be the, the author of, of the set library or something. Um, and it's like, you know, that's no fun. But um, with orderators, uh, we can just do the do the intersection. It's fully lazy, and then we can just check if the orderator is empty. Um, All right. So, let me show you a couple things. Um, I'll, I'll have you write this, but uh, there's already functions for converting creating an orderator from a set. It's just called orderator.fromset. Um, and there's also a function orderator.isEmpty. So orderator from set. Thank you. Gotcha. OK. Very cool. Meanwhile, so I'm going to work on a watch expression to test this. OK, cool. So I'm going to grab oh, geez. Oh, sorry. VS Code. <laughs> CRDT implementation of VS Code is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone get on that. Uh, we would like a plugin. Thank you. <laughs> Intersect. Or intersection. Oops. Okay, so taking this one and this one. It's empty. Okay. Let's clean up this console and save that again. All right, so we get in our watch expression, your example, these two sets do not have. Um, well, that's that not right. busted, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, shouldn't they intersect? Oh, oh, do we just have it flipped? We I have it flipped, have yeah. We want like the well, it's it's not we want we don't want to check if it's empty we want to check if it's non-empty so just uh, add, add a boolean dot not in there or something let's see if that'll work maybe we should do another that. test just to make yeah, sure we, it's we not we should just verify <laughs> trust but verify yeah let's 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 make sure here okay okay i think i think we got it i trust um, this yeah this library is actually, it's, I would say, pretty well tested. Um, for the testing strategy, I use property-based testing to generate um, generate data, do the orderator operations, and then I actually compare uh, for consistency with the set and map implementations. Um, 
which are hopefully correct at this point <laughs> in unison in unison's uh, uh, life. So cool. Cool. So all right. So what's neat about this is that the um, you know we implemented it in this very modular way of just reusing the existing intersection function, but it is still as <coughs> efficient as if we kind of wrote it uh, in a monolithic way, you know, with special knowledge of sets internals. So, um, you know, basically as soon as even one element of either set is found in the other, um, it's going to return immediately. So cool. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. How was that so far? So far, so good. All right. <laughs> All right, are you ready for a more brain bendy one? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get into okay. it. Okay. Um, let me just make sure. Oh yeah, Simon. Simon was all over it. It's not is empty. When in doubt, yeah. trust Simon. Yes. <laughs> all right. Awesome. All right. So the brain bendy one. What is this going to be? So I was thinking. Um. Let's implement distinct. And what this is going to do, or what I, you know, what I want it to do, is um, I want it to, you know, convert. So it's it's going to take a sorted, you know, uh, sort you know, sorted orderator. Um, so that's kind of an assumption that basically whenever you're working with orderators, you're assuming that they're sorted. And, you know, if you create one from, you know, a set or a map, obviously it is sorted. Uh, if you create one from a list by calling orderator from list, it's also going to sort that list. Um, so anyway, so suppose we have, we have a, we have an orderator and it has a whole bunch of duplicates potentially. And I want to write a generic function that will remove all the duplicates and, you know, just produce an orderator that with has, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, now this one is interesting because, uh, you know, this doesn't already exist in the library. And so we're actually going to be uh, directly um, sort of interacting with the with the orderator as a consumer of the of the orderator. And so there's two or there's one main function that we're going to use for that, which is orderator dot step. Hmm. Um, and let's even yeah, just just look at the type. So given an orderator, it returns either. So it returns either left, meaning it's done, and it returns the result R, mm -hmm. or it returns basically the head and the tail of the orderator. Except the tail is not just another orderator. The tail is actually a function from an instruction to the orderator. OK? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. But maybe even before, uh, before getting into the code, like, what's well, like, how would you just conceptually, um, how would you remove the duplicates from a stream using just, um, you know, you have the ability to advance to the next element of the stream or skip ahead. Yeah, so, I would yeah. I would take the first element if it's there uh -huh. and do like a take while or skip while until I see something that is different in the list and that becomes my next yeah. uh, thing and then so on and so forth. So you keep track of like the last distinct thing you've seen uh, and then when sure you have no more list then you're done. You build an accumulation. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. We lost Rebecca, your video. I can see your video now. Great. Excellent. We're back. We're back. 
All right, and then hopefully Riverside will okay. Please uh, let capture me know this if all I'm in. Frozen. Uh, okay, so yeah, that sounded good. You, yeah, you sort of you take an element and then you skip ahead and, until you see a different element, basically, mm. and just keep doing that. So let, yeah, let's see if we can write it. Okay. Okay. Using yeah. step. Using step. Okay. I'm going to help us out a little bit. So we're going to return, we're returning an orderator that's delayed. And that's, that's generally what, what you do. Gotcha. Okay. And then we will, um, yeah, we're, we're just going to call, we're going to call go. This is going to be our like recursive function. And then here's where I think we're going to call step mm. and do something, but I, I'm going to kind of hand it over to you and I'll, I'll help you out if, if you get stuck. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I step in the signature of step, we've got the thing that it takes. That's the orderator. And the instruction is from the consumer back to the producer. So we need to tell the producer when to skip ahead. And I think that is the, you know, keeping track of the current state. And then when I see something different, that is the instruction that I need to communicate back. So. Okay. The thing that I don't necessarily know is the process of like iteration, because in, in a reified data type, I would have head and tail in a different manner right and i think yeah. i have to call step to get said head or tail so maybe that would be uh the, the first step yeah okay let's try that let's do that i'm gonna i'm gonna write a type signature on this cool even though if i were i would probably not bother if i was doing this myself but <laughs> this is better for for <laughs> teaching purposes so yes um, okay so I've got a left, um, and left contains the, just call it value. Um, yeah. So what do we do here? Current or next. Left, left means we're done. Left means A doesn't have any more elements. Ooh, okay. Great. Um, and then Looks amazing so far. Yeah. Okay. So right is a tuple of the element. Uh huh. Element yeah, I, I call it structure, yeah. which is a function. Okay. So yeah, here. I actually I would just call these head and tail. Head ah, and tail. That's a good. It's just the tail instead of it being a stream, it's a function from instruction to stream, basically. Hmm. Okay. okay, that's weird, but okay. All right, great, well, this is good so far. What, okay, I mean... so uh, I'm noticing yeah. here, we, we need Jeez. some notion of like keeping track of the last distinct element. So do I need to add any state into my like mini handler or is this, or is that element the last distinct a i think no i don't think we need state because we have head and that mm. is that's basically all we need okay. so it, it, like in other words imagine this is called I'll at call the very beginning me. of the stream oh really okay now you're back it, it cuts Can you hear out me now? on occasion. Okay. Um, well, suppose we're at the very start. Imagine this is being called for the very first time with the value one. So we haven't seen anything yet, right? Right. So the value one is good. It's new. So we haven't seen it before. So we want to emit that to the output, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just that there might be a bunch of ones following it that we want to skip over, mm. but we can do that right here in this case. Gotcha. Okay. 
So in order to do that, the instruction for that would be next. Well, what about just how, so first we want to emit head to the output. So how do we do that? That's with oh, yield. Oh, we could use the yield with okay. this constructor. So we're going to yield that yep. in. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is that yield returns an instruction. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, we, we are, this is the brain bendy part is um, that we ourselves may have a consumer. So we are consuming, you know, the sort of inner stream and where we are, you know, making it distinct, but um, we ourselves then may be getting consumed by another stream that's outside of us, which has another instruction. And so every time we yield, we're going to get back an instruction from that outer, outer stream. That's kind of the brain bendy part. What? Um, so, so we're going to get back, uh, let's call it instruction. And what is instruction? Instruction is going to be an instruction of A. Um, Now you might think like, oh, well, and what's the type of tail? The type of tail is a function from instruction to stream. And you might think like, oh, well, maybe we'll just pass that instruction to tail, except mm. that's not quite right. Mm. Uh, because we want to add some skipping, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would just yeah, make, yeah. <laughs> like replay that whole stream. Yeah. So yeah. Can you think about what okay. we want to basically transform this instruction somehow before passing it to tail. Okay. So instruction, just reminding myself what the two cases are instruction. instruction. Hard to spell instruction. It is. Uh, okay. So skip while is something to Boolean. Ah, so I, I want to pass something like, is this equal to the thing yielded? Like, yeah. Is it great? Is the thing that's next or whatever equal um, to the thing that I currently have my head element. Okay. So yeah, maybe let's, let's even just, I'll, I'm going to write out the structure of this. So we're going to somehow transform that instruction and then we're going to just call go with, uh, the tail of that instruction prime. Okay, this should type check. So, so yeah, now let's do the line 110 case where we, if our consumer is telling us just go next to the next element, we still need to do some skipping, right? Mm. So what we want to construct a skip while instruction that's going to skip over, uh, all the other uh, head head values values that are equal to head. Ah, okay. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. Skip while Okay. So I need to create a boolean. I could say skip while is equal to head is it? Yeah. The, the also of type A. Yeah. Um, okay. Just need a lambda. Oh, I I do. In skip well. Yeah, it's like A goes to A equals. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Boom. Ooh. Okay. 
I think okay. the shadowing that... is is confusing. Um, oh sure, let's, yeah. Let's whatever. maybe give this. Or is there maybe something more descriptive um, of what is being put uh, that in this lambda? Is it like skip it's while like L LM or stream? something? It's like it's this is going to be given elements of of the stream. So yeah, okay. it seems fun. I don't know. Okay. Okay, that looks okay. good. All right, now the more brain bendy one is this line one eleven. Uh, if we receive a skip while instruction. Mm. So we can't just discard the the predicate. P that we're given, right? Because, mm. uh, because for instance, what if they what if they have, give a predicate that's like skip while you're less than five hundred, and then all that we do is we skip the the ones, and then we end up at two. When it's like, oh well, we could have kept skipping. You know, obviously we want to skip all the all the ones, the duplicate ones, but we want to keep skipping because the uh our consumer is wants to do some additional skipping gotcha so, so we need like a logical um is it and skip while this and that and that forms our next instruction um almost yeah it's it's or but yeah you have the right it's intuition cool. yeah <laughs> we want to skip while either we want to skip because there's a duplicate or our parent or our uh, outer consumer wants to skip. Right. As long as either one wants to skip, we want to keep skipping. We want to keep skipping. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is there a uh, the, the, the apply or and? I feel like you could just, there might be, but you could just construct okay. a fresh Lambda that, You're right. yeah. I should. <laughs> I should not try and be weirdly fancy about this. All right, so this is LM. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to construct a test here. Uh, or uh, skip function. Or LM is equal to head lambda. Okay, let's make this a little prettier so people may be able to see that a bit better. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. Will it blend? Oh, uh, we need to give sure. it some help. Sure. Operator to okay, us. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. That. Okay. Does not do the thing. It does not do the thing. Let's see. What did we goof up? <laughs> so when we see a next thing, check if the element is equal to the current thing. If we receive a skip instruction with the predicate, we are saying to skip if the element, if the predicate is true, skip true, or the element is equal to the head. Yeah. Am I flipping a Boolean? So is, uh, I guess, skip while should skip while true. It's not like some reverse thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Skip, skip while true. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyone in the audience see what we did wrong? What have we done? <laughs> Tail. 
is the watch expression correct? It is, okay, good, good question. Um, okay, am I recursively calling the right things? This outer one handles the top one, this inner one handles the tail with uh, we're we're not passing the. Are we passing instruction prime? We are. Yeah. That looks right. Um. Hmm. Am I comparing the right thing here? Do we need to call go know. again? No. Because skip while ha handling the advancement. Go. Yeah, that seems. Hmm. I'm going to copy this into the chat in case anyone's hacking along. OK. Um, I'm just going to make the watch expression a simpler example with like yeah, two duplicates or something. I just want to see. Um, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I need to see something. Mm. Oh, interesting. OK. Oh, OK. I think I have an idea of what is maybe happening. But anyway, I think distinct is correct. Um, I think Let's it's uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, from list um, actually does a sort. And I'm guessing that the sort uh, does some weird stuff with duplicates, is my guess. So I have a bug in, in orderator.sort. But gotcha. uh, if we're just giving it a sorted list, it... yeah, you gotcha. can, you can initialize an orderator from a sorted um, a list that you assume to to have already be sorted. Hmm. Um, cool. So I will I will look into that. But, okay, uh, I'm glad you noticed that because I genuinely was like I'm checking all the the cases. Yeah, it really I'm, I'm not it really seemed stuff. correct. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, this is why it's great okay. to pair with the library author himself. <laughs> yeah. And, um, this implementation is actually going to be pretty efficient, even if you have very long runs of, um, duplicates. So it's kind of like, it's going to binary search for that, you know, the point where it changes over to the next element. Mm. Um, one thing I was going to mention is um, there's actually another type of search that you can do. It's called a galloping search, which um, is it's like binary search, but you start it, it returns more quickly if the result is close to where you currently are. So it's like you check index one, then index two, then index four, eight, 16. Eventually, you go past where you where you're searching for, and then you have a range that you do binary search in, and that that's a little bit better than binary search for this kind of thing. Huh. So that's actually what the orderator uh, library uses uh, when you are working with lists. Anyway, that's awesome. Uh, is galloping search the name you gave it, or is or is that like the? the uh, name no, out that's there in like the world? yeah, it's it's like a standard. Uh, or semi-standard name name for it. Gotcha. It's well um, named. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I had some more. I had another example, but I think we should. I feel like this is probably a good stopping point. Um, yeah. Yeah. This has been super cool to see. 
like how to marshal the components of the orderator library to like implement some of the functional combinators that, you know, list.distinct, um, that's, that's a common one. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah, and I will link to uh, just the latest release of the library. It has a nice readme. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different algorithms you can implement on orderators, not just the, the ones that we went through today. Um, and also, uh, you know, uh, it's not just uh, in-memory data structures that you can provide an orderator for. Um, the durable data structures that we have in cloud, um, like the B tree, you can get an orderator from that. And so you can, you know, be doing these like streaming, uh, you know, calculations and intersections on like large data sets. And it, it ends up work, it ends up being pretty efficient, you know, as, as long as the result, as long as the final result set ends up being small, like you're just getting the top 10 search results or whatever. Huh. So, okay. Okay. So yeah. So folks are Chris, curious, like how, if you had to call for contributions or applications for the library, uh, is there anything you'd like to see or just general areas of, of experimentation? You'd be really thrilled to, to see Unison people writing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I would, it might be interesting to see, um, just if there's other, yeah, I'd like someone to fix the bug, <laughs> the bug, <laughs> the bug with the sorting function. Yeah. Can someone just knock that out? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but just if you, if you start using the library and, and are sort of missing, um, you know, helper functions or things like that, um, then that, that, yeah, I think that those would be welcome contributions. Um, if there's other data structures, um, yeah, or or algorithms. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm I'm more just curious to uh, see people, you know, play around with it and and see what they think and if they find it useful. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Well, that is, I think, a great place to transition over to uh, the Q and A slash office hour section. So, if you want to hang around, ask Paul more questions about the orderator library or start to, you know, implement your own orderator search over B tree or something. Uh, we're going to be hanging out in the office hours channel. Um, and we would love to see you. So thank you so much, Paul. This has been super fun. I learned yeah. a lot about orderators. And, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> hopefully. It yeah. Thanks for being such a good sport. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll head over there and we'll see you folks later. All right. Bye, everyone.